with the wind at the back of the man who will kick off Sam Hayworth. 45 kickoffs this year. He averages to the seven yard line. Nine touchbacks, three out. Should be able to get this one to the end zone. Yeah, a little wind to his back, as you mentioned. Uh, should be able to hit the end zone. He has been a little short. Of course, he had the wind in his face for most of the kickoffs last week. Not a lot of kickoffs because of the low scoring game, but had the wind to his face and was not able to get there in Clarksville and see if the wind on his back makes any difference here. Robert Morris, two and seven, 0 and five in their conference. EKU, five and four, three and two in the OBC. Third meeting between the Colonials and the Curdles is underway. EKU in the gray uniforms to the four. It's going to be a fair catch. Move the football to the 25, and that's where RMU will scrimmage from under their graduate student quarterback, Jimmy Walker, two years at Cerritos College out in his home state of California. Paul, double tight ends. You slide him out and block. Great blocking out there, and it opens up the lane for Scott. He goes in untouched. He has not missed all year, Sam Hayworth, for the PAT, but they line up in the double swinging gate. One left, one right. Here's Ralph Patton faking, and he's trying to get to the goal line, and he can't. It'll be 7-6, Robert Morris. He's not able to convert on their two-point conversion, but L.J. Scott, a seven-yard touchdown run. 14 play drive, 71 yards, 541. Greg, third time this year, the Colonels have went 14 plays in a drive. That's the longest this year. They did it in two other games this season. And uh, they are now one for three on PAT tries for two. First time they've run one and failed. The other time, one for two on passes. Here's the kickoff by Sam Hayworth. Again, not getting it to the end zone like he did earlier in the year, but won't matter a fair catch for the second time for the Colonials. Colonial seven, Eastern Kentucky on their home field six, 434 to go in the first half. This is a Robert Morris team with a new head coach. 25 yard field goal attempt, Shelton the snap. Richards the hold. Hayworth has missed his last two after hitting seven in a row. Exchange is good, Hayworth plenty of leg, and it is good. EKU closes within seven. 9-17 to go, first half, 16-9, Robert Morris, hurdle football from Learfield. Robert Morris, offensive line. Carter at his own 40, hoping for a miracle here. With 11 seconds to go, and the check punt, which I don't think will come anywhere near Carter. Fourth down and one. He's letting the play clock run down before he gets the snap at three. And they don't even get it off. Well, you can never count on anything at this level of football. Now, yeah, football is such an emotional game. Yeah, I was getting ready to say emotions play such a big part. Here comes the punt by Check, and EKU blocks it. That's why they scoop it. They score. The block is on, and the game is on. Eastern Kentucky has done it. A big time play. They mopped the guy that got it, and it is Brenton Irvin. Wow. That changed things, didn't it? I'm waiting to see who came in and got the block on the punt, but Irvin able to scoop it up, get into the end zone. That's exactly what the Colonels wanted to have happen there. Well, you saw Carter running up, so you knew the block was on, and it was smothered and scored at Eastern Kentucky. Has cut it to eight. Great time management by Mark Elder. The pump block. Second of the year, and the PAT by Hayworth, good. And that has certainly turned this game on a dime. From 14 down, EKU within seven. It was blocked and recovered. Well, it was blocked by Tips Clemens, and it was recovered by Irvin, as we said. For Tips Clemens, he had a block as well against Marshall. Remember, he blocked the punt, returned it 38 yards, not for a score. This time, the Michigan State transfer makes what could be the biggest play of the ball game. This was headed to 14, 14, uh, 14 point lead for RMU. It's now down to seven, and a team that's two and seven, you wonder what that does to their psyche.
and it wasn't from the side. It was right up the middle. They came right toward the punter. Tips Clemens able to get the penetration, and he was at the punter before he even dropped the football to get the kick away. So he was there in a hurry, and Brent Irvin was with him, able to just go right by his hip, pick up the football, and get into the end zone. The 254th punt of a four-year punter in Adam Check. Checkmate Colonels on the block by Tips Clemens, recovered by Brent Irvin for the score. Second Colonel in as many games to score that's on the defensive side of the football this time on special teams. Fair catch called for on the kickoff. And with five seconds to go, the second punt of the day for LJ Scott. Career touchdown number 17. And Scott has gone over a thousand yards in his EKU career now. He needed 35 today. He is at 43 on a two-yard touchdown run. He had a seven-yarder earlier. And LJ Scott moving up near the 1400 mark in his career when you add in two years at the University of Louisville. For the tie, Hayworth a little high on the snap. Richard sets it down on this cold day. The Aussie gets it to the turf. The Floridian puts it through. 451 in the third. And we are tied at 23. Hurdle football from Learfield. Seven play, 80 yard drive. It took 241 off the clock, Greg. Hayworth with a squibber kick, and it kind of gets through guys. Finally picked up by Robinson, running laterally in Eastern Kentucky, takes his pins out from under him. That was a tremendous tackle by the Maroons. Andrew Juck, a redshirt freshman, Cornelius, North Carolina. That was like the ball in no man's land, like a fly ball in shallow center field that the shortstop, second baseman, and center fielder were coming after, and nobody got to it for a moment. Well, Hayworth got helped out by the bad hop. It, it took a turf hop. Yeah. <laughs> Went over the head of the first guy and then got into that, as you said, no man's land. First time. It's actually a, an injured colonial down. The EKU trainers are out as it's on the EKU side of the field, and they are waving and hailing a trainer from Robert Morris to come out and check on one of the players. 12-16 in the game, tied at 23. Situation is fourth down and about six for EKU at the 29. This would be about a 46-yarder. It's in Hayworth's range. He has um, hit a pair of 41-yarders this year, missed a 51-yarder on a warmer day against Austin P last week no wind right now and if Hayworth can hit it you know he's got the leg but you always wonder about a cold day right cold football to travel as well um, so it, it's a it, it may add about a yard really kind of in the when you think about the overall scheme of the kick, but certainly within Hayworth's range, I think he could probably get this easily. It's the thing here is the angle. Can he bring it back to the middle of the field? Timmons was the injured player walking off under his own power. Quick update on the scoreboard, Wes. How about the game in Murray? They have taken a 34-31 lead over SEMO. Wow. A minute and a half to go, but SEMO has it at the Murray 30. 90 seconds left. And they have made game winners all year long like that. This will be about a 47-yarder from the near hash. Shelton the snap, set down Richards. Hayworth's leg into it. It's tumbling and over, and it hits the upright left side. It's the second game in a row that Hayward has hit the upright on the left side, and he's now one of his last four after hitting seven in a row prior. That kind of day for both teams in kicking today. He overcompensated, Greg. I talked about the angle having to bring it back to the middle of the field. He overcompensated and pushed it to the left side. So we stay tied with 11 tremendous today. That was a run blitz. He knew exactly where that was going and went right to the ball carrier. He's there when the ball gets there. 8.55, clock moving. About a 31, 32 yard field goal between the hashes, shaded right for Hayworth. Just hit one off the upright. This one's shaving to the left, but it is inside the left upright at Eastern Kentucky for the first time today. Get a field goal, the second of the day.
from Hayworth and lead it 26-23. Colonel football from Learfield. 0-0. Jared Tucker's interception set up everything. Six plays, 16 yards, two minutes and 21 seconds off the clock with 8.41 to go. Colonel's up three. Hayworth puts his foot into it. They're going to return this one from the seven-yard line. Only second time they've tried to return, and not a good decision for Robinson because of the EKU defense. So they pin him back behind the 20 around the 18-yard line. So now the field position beginning to tilt towards Eastern Kentucky after they had played on the Nick love to run when they're in the red zone. They throw that to the corner of the end zone, and Beerman stretches out at the last moment to be able to pull it in. Big time catch by the freshman. The redshirt freshman with his first touchdown catch. Wow, 32-30 EKU, important PAT here. 80 seconds left of the game. Set down, kick up. Yes. One minute, 20 seconds to go. And Eastern Kentucky rumbles downfield 73 yards. A huge 34-yard screen to Creamer. Flag down, by the way. Flag down. Be careful here. Cameron Koaleski costing his team on a foul at the end. Okay, not him. Instead, <laughs> it is called on another EKU player. Leonard Humphrey. Yeah, Leonard Humphrey. So Humphrey costing his team 15 yards on a kickoff. That's important with Jimmy Walker to get his team in field goal position, if not to score a touchdown. The personal foul on Humphrey assessed after the kickoff, but EKU is gonna have to be careful here on the kickoff. But what a pass by Parker McKinney. His first of the day at Eastern Kentucky on a tremendous drive with all the pressure on him. And you know, you hate to say it, but the old cliche, you may have scored too quick. An eight yard pass to complete an eight play, 73 yard drive of two minutes and 17 seconds. Now can the defense get a stop? Well, you can take heart in the fact that most of the drives today by Robert Morris have been long time consuming drives in which they've had to take what the defense give them. And that's underneath short chunks of yardage in the passing game and whatever you can get out of the running game. They have not had a lot of plays over 10 yards today. McKinney today, 17 to 32, one TD, one pick, sacked twice. Jimmy Walker, 19 of 31, 226 yards, three TDs, the three different receivers, and he has not been sacked. And EKU has to kick off the 20 yard line. That is a major mistake and no reason for it on a give me PAT by Leonard Humphrey. Absolutely none, Jim. It's a mental mistake, certainly. Here comes Hayward trying to put his foot into it, and the returner will get it over the shoulder at the 21. Robinson, he's through a gap over the 40 and up to the about 43 or 44. So that 15 yards hurt and hurt in a big way. Now, can Jimmy Walker with a minute 13 of field into, into range for Hayward? You've got three timeouts, but it's going to take about two or three plays to get there. Eastern Kentucky has all of its timeouts. They don't carry over to overtime, I don't believe. So here we go. See if they squib this away from Scott. Dangerous kick returner. Yes, they will. Eastern Kentucky bounces off of a curdle, but they cover it up at the 42. And that's not with three timeouts left. It was Chuck that got on it. That was not a great squib kick for Robert Morris. Now EKU has three timeouts, 24 seconds from their own 42 in a 33-33 game. And you don't have to play the sidelines on the passing game. You don't have to play the clock here. You have all three timeouts, so you also have the middle of the field. You complete a couple of those in the middle, call timeouts, you can get into field goal range. Inside 50 is range for Hayworth, even though he banged one off the upright from 48 earlier today. That thing would have been good from 55. Operate from their own 42. McKinney had given the Colonels a lead with an eight-yard touchdown pass with a minute 20 to go. 
Pressure on. He's going to take off and run, looking to throw, and he'll tuck it under and keep going and run out of bounds to the 47. That blew a lot of time. Took it down to 16, but it was good coverage downfield by this tested defense of Robert Morris. EKU 297 yards. Robert Morris with 411. They had 172 against Sacred Heart. And it averaged below 200 a game the last two games and seven points a game. 16 seconds to go. Let's see how far downfield Eastern throws it here. McKinney set to throw. Great protection. Takes off and runs again across midfield and goes out of bounds with eight seconds to go. So you've got one more throw, Jim, and a timeout in a 33-33 game. You got to get it down to about the 33-yard line to be within range of Hayworth here. You're at the 43 now. Yeah, you're, you cannot, cannot, as the quarterback, do that three times in a row. You have got to throw this football because if it's completed, you have to burn a timeout very quickly. A run to the sideline will take too much time. And Mark Eller has plenty of timeouts, three, so he'll take it with him. Eight seconds left, tied at 33. EKU was down as many as 14 in this game. Went up three, fell down four, went up three, tied at three at zero again at 33-33. We've been all over the map in this one. And, you know, you would think, hey, and it is. It's been a great game. It's been fun to watch back and forth. I think what nags you if you're an EKU fan is that you're going against a team that hadn't won a Division I game, has lost 19 in a row on the road, gave up bukus of yards and points all year, and you would think they would come in pretty much season over, and instead they've come in and had a great game plan and tested EKU on senior day. Uh, and you have to be wary of teams that have nothing to lose. They come in with that attitude. That's the way they've played today. Here's McKinney with eight seconds to operate. Got to be quick here. He takes off, and he throws to the sidelines and threw it away with three seconds to go. So they have had pressure on, and now EKU for the Hail Mary because you are way out of field goal range here. Sam Hayworth does not try to avoid heartache in Richmond, Kentucky. They'll get the ball after this important PAT. Set down, Hayworth up with it, splits the sticks. We go to the bottom half of the first overtime in Richmond. 40-33 Eastern Kentucky. That was a dose of LJ Scott four runs and he puts it in the end for two, and a timeout is called. Bowie goes wide right. Vecchio in a slot right as well. One running back in a wing. Here comes Walker, sets in the pocket. They scramble, and flags are. Stevens beside Walker and the two tight ends, and Gonzalez and Petri go left to right. Game, Walker back to pass. Double cocks at back of the end zone, tipped away, Colonel's win! Winning season, Colonel's win! Colonel's win! Colonel's win! It wasn't easy. In the back of the end zone, a Colonel got his hand on it. Let's take another look of here on our replay to see if we can see who it is. It's the fade pattern. It's Jared Tucker, I believe, that knocked it away. He has had a tough afternoon, did have an interception earlier, but jumps up just enough to knock that one away in the corner of the end zone. 40-39 on a pass deflection by Jared Tucker. Eastern Kentucky wins for the first time since 2015 in an overtime game and locks up its first winning season since 2015 as well. For analyst Jim Tyree, I'm Greg Stottlemyre from here in Richmond.